This is the latest briefing from the National Weather Service. Um, Riviera Beach um, is no longer under a flood watch. However, a tropical storm warning still remains in effect for our areas. <clears throat> I am hopeful that at this point you've made all the appropriate preparations to weather the storm and look forward to sheltering in place for the next 12 uh, to 36 hours as this storm moves through our area. Uh, we are going to start to see now the impacts of the storm make its way uh, through Palm Beach County. Uh, we can expect winds to continue to increase throughout the evening into the early morning hours and persist to, to, into tomorrow morning. Um, we're eventually throughout the day, we'll start to see conditions uh, get better. Uh, as it relates to storm surge and inundation, uh, there is no uh, significant impact to our area as it relates to storm surge or inundation, uh, but we are taking precautionary actions in certain areas that have proven to be problematic for us in the past. Flooding rain is not a significant concern for us. Uh, they have lifted the flood advisory. Uh, so we do want to be mindful, though, that we could see periods of um, intense rainfall and localized flooding, but we are not expected to see the long term, uh, long uh, durations of rain. We're going to see those continual bands move through the area. There is still a concern and probably one of the biggest concerns we have here at the EOC is for the potential for tornadoes. Uh, there have been several tornado watches issued in and around our area, and those uh, tornado watches at this time will remain in effect till 9 p.m., but we expect for that to be extended through tonight and into Thursday morning. The marine forecast is uh, um, right now considering a high surf advisory and rip currents so in precautions we have taken down um the services at our municipal beachfront we have shuttered operations uh, for today and tomorrow and we will make a determination on whether or not the municipal beach will be open to swimmers on friday Looking through some of the <clears throat> other slides from the National Weather Service, I think one of the big questions we'd like to know is when can we start to see the most significant impacts? And really, we're going to start to see those um, in the wee hours of the morning. We are expected in Palm Beach County to see sustained winds of 30 to 40 miles an hour with gust upwards of 50 to 60 miles an hour. In Palm Beach County, we should start to see the worst of the weather beginning at about 8 p.m., but we will have squalls of weather coming through between now and then, and we should see those subside by no later than 4 o'clock on Thursday. That is a conservative estimate to ensure that we're covering the full window of time in which bands may move through our area. We do anticipate conditions to get better earlier in the day Thursday, but we want to make sure we err on the side of caution and have the community stay off the roads uh, for the majority of the day tomorrow. The tropical storm wind speed probabilities for our area are at 70%. There is a 70% chance that we will see sustained tropical storm force winds in our area. As it relates to those higher level or high end tropical storm force winds, there is a 10% chance that we will see those higher end, lower category one, category two hurricane winds. But again, the tornadoes are the outlier. Uh, the tornadoes could bring significant wind and rain. While it will be of a short duration, it will be of significant intensity. Um, Looking at some of the flooding impacts, they use uh, some of the different models from Central Florida. There are concerns with uh, flooding north of Lake Okeechobee. Again, won't be a direct effect to our area. So as of right now, again, um, our level of confidence as it relates to the intensity and the track of the storm is confident. Uh, there still is a possibility for the storm to wobble as it has several times throughout the day today. And while it may look small on the radar, a wobble could account for a 50 mile difference on whether this thing makes landfall to north or to the south 
of the projected path. So we will continue to monitor this storm in the EOC. We are having crews right now out making a final push. Uh, we'll have our operations section chief, Captain Glenn Meyer, speak to some of the last minute preparations we are making here in the city and some of the uh, standby operations that will be remaining in place overnight to ensure that our residents are being looked after. So again, I hope that you have made your final preparations. We're gonna ask our residents to please stay off the roadways. Go ahead and look to shelter in place. Remember, if you have any storm related issues, you can utilize the city's notification system, Q Alert, which is located on our city's webpage. There's a banner across the top for you to report any storm related damage. And as soon as conditions are safe, we will be deploying crews uh, to address those issues. Uh, we will be praying for you and your families. Uh, stay safe and we will be looking to brief our community again tomorrow um, after first light, once our crews can get out and make a first push to determine the severity of the impacts, we will be sure to bring that information to our community. At this point in time, I'd like to turn the uh, presentation over to Captain Glenn Myers, our operations section chief. Good evening, Captain Glenn Meyer, Revere Beach Police Department. First and foremost, I want everyone to know that our employees are committed to the safety and well being of all of our residents, visitors, and business owners. With that being said, I want to assure the residents that law enforcement and fire rescue services will continue throughout the city during the duration of the storm as long as conditions are safe to do so. We're not anticipating any shortfalls in protection or responding to calls in the city. So I wanna assure the residents that those functions will continue. With that being said, when it is safe to drive again after this storm clears the area, I wanna remind all of our residents to be very careful and vigilant in their driving on the roadways. It is possible that there could be hazards to include trees that have fallen or downed wires. We want to remind residents to use extreme caution when they're traveling and to be mindful of those conditions and to report them immediately. If you find a tree down or a wire down, contact uh, our emergency services and we'll respond and address that issue appropriately. Uh, to continue a little bit further, we do have our public works team that is going to be working throughout the night on an emergency basis. They are here in the city, they're in a safe location and they'll respond to hazards uh, if they do come up. We also have our utility special district team that is here throughout the night as well, and they will res be responding to any types of emergencies that happen in the city based on weather conditions. So I wanna assure everyone that we have those resources in place and we're available to respond to the needs of the city. Some of the items that we have addressed today was the removal of the roadway flooded signs that you may have seen throughout the city. Those signs have been removed as they could become a projectile. If the need arises that we do find flooded roads after the storm, we will place those back out in position. But based on the current forecast, we're not anticipating that those conditions uh, will occur. However, as I said, we'll be prepared to deploy that if needed. I just want to give a special thanks to all of our residents for being patient during this time. I know there's a lot of concerns that we have, rightfully so, uh, based on the storm, but be rest assured that, that we're here to make sure the mission is fulfilled and that we accomplish all of our goals and objectives together. So I thank everyone for their patience. We'll continue to pray for the well-being of our neighbors who are going to be more uh, severely impacted than we will and we'll continue to be here throughout the night and the duration of the storm. Thank you so much. We will now turn the presentation over to our planning section, Chief Terrence Bailey. Good afternoon, community in Riviera Beach and staff. This is Terrence Bailey, your planning section chief. As indicated in our previous communique, the planning section stands ready to aid the operational staff in fulfilling the mission. We're currently working on contingency plans and ingesting information from all uh, our federal and state partners and working and looking forward to uh, implementing our recovery plan. That is your planning report. And with that, I will turn it over to AC Golden in the logistics section. 
Hello, everyone. As of noon time today, logistics has been in full preparation to support the operation in the aftermath of Hurricane Milton. We're currently working diligently to secure housing and sustenance for those men and women that are riding out Hurricane Milton as we continue to protect the city's residents and visitors during this inclement weather. Logistics will continue to protect those basic needs for those men and women that are protecting all of you. And that is it for logistics. Again, uh, just want to thank everybody for their efforts uh, with respect to uh, the preparation activities. A couple of things that I did want to make sure that the community is aware of is both the police, fire department, utility district department, public works have all upstaffed. And so we have additional personnel at key locations throughout the city to be able to respond in the event that there is a situation that requires city personnel to go out. However, once we have sustained winds that are over 35 to 45 miles an hour, we would not be putting city apparatus on the roadway. And so it's important to know that once we anticipate the weather to worsen around the eight o'clock hour is from a public safety perspective, apparatus is not safe to be on our roadways at when the sustained winds are at 35 to 45 miles an hour. So the same thing for members of our community. Please do not traverse our community to see things that are happening when we have the weather that we're anticipating to start really impacting our area around 8 p.m. this evening. Also, it was mentioned earlier about our Q Alert system. That is a system that if you go to rivierbeach.org, you go to our website, there's a banner that says Hurricane Milton. You could put any information or any questions that you may have, and that comes directly to the Emergency Operations Center and staff responds. We've been getting inquiries from places like Loxahatchee and different places in, in Palm Beach County, and we're trying to resolve those particular issues, at least point persons in the right direction, but it is specific to our, our residents here in Riviera Beach. And so if you have questions or you see something happening or something that could become a projectile or become an issue during this activation, please do not hesitate to inform us accordingly. That software does allow for pictures to be uploaded. Also, one of the things that I think is very important to our residents before the weather uh, continues to worsen under a state of an emergency through the, uh, the governor's office, Floridians are able to get early refills on prescription medication. So please make sure if you haven't been able to fill some of those prescriptions, go ahead and do so as quickly as possible. Also, if there is power outages, obviously ATM and credit card readers and the like don't work. And so we encourage people to always have small amounts of cash in the event that they have to conduct business um, with uh, outfits that certain card readers are, are not working. Also, for those that persons that have electrical vehicles. The city does have electric chargers through our city. We have two charging stations at the Riviera Beach Public Library. We have a total of about four, I believe, at the Riviera Beach Marina. And then we also have another two of the urban chargers at the Ocean Walk. And so those chargers, if they are available and you are a charge point customer or have a charge point account, those are for free of service. So those are um, opportunities that are available to you. Please do not drive through any standing water. That becomes a issue both for electric vehicles. Uh, we did receive information from the state, um, the fire mar marshal from the state of uh, some concerns about vehicles that are driving through standing waters, especially salt water. And so please do not drive through any standing water. That's a public safety issue. And also one of the things that we wanna make sure our community is aware of Please do not park on stormwater infrastructure on our inlets, on sidewalks, anything that obstructs our stormwater drains that impedes the ability for water to safely make its way to the appropriate drainage structures to be able to get the water where it needs to go. We anticipate this being more of a wind event uh, than originally anticipated to be more of a, a rain event, but we can anticipate uh, some pretty strong winds that will come into our, our community. So please be vigilant and be mindful of that. And a number that I wanna make sure that people are uh, write this number down, it's 561-845-4000. That is the city of Riviera Beach's main line. We have a 24 hour call center that is available. The call takers will take any uh, questions that you may have and they will forward that information to the Emergency Operations Center and they will, we will provide that information uh, to you all. So certainly, I uh, just want you to know staff is working diligently to uh, respond uh, during this particular incident. And then once we get 
uh, first daylight, we'll provide the community with some additional updates and some pictures of, of what we're seeing. When you go out in the morning and you make your assessments as well, please understand that we still anticipate weather conditions till about 4 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. So uh, watch the local weather channels. Please subscribe to our social media and the appropriate communication tools that we have to stay up to date as to what's going on. And so before we get into answering any questions that the community members may have, I do want to provide an opportunity for uh, the elected officials that have been extremely supportive of staff when we've had to activate in an emergency declaration and have provided us the resources to be able to ensure that the community is safe um, during these particular um, activities. So at this time, I'm going to uh, see if any of our council persons and I'll call them by name and then uh, they can unmute their mic and then we'll take some questions from the community. So first, I'll start with if Mayor Felder. All right. Uh, Councilperson Trodrick McCoy. Okay, Councilperson Miller Anderson. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as always, I do want to thank you, Mr. Evans, and your staff. Um, you all do a marvelous job when it comes to the Emergency Operations Center and during the times when we have our um, weather events and as well as when we had our COVID event, um, the professionalism that you all display during this time is above all the very best. Um, you know, you make things very easy for us. And I can certainly say that as I was out, um, I saw a lot of city trucks out. I saw a lot of employees out in the community driving up each and every street. Um, making sure that, you know, we didn't have any debris that's still out there, any trash, especially in the areas that had um, trash pickup today. Um, again, I just really, truly appreciate the work that you all do, especially during this time when we're trying to prepare for um, weather events such as this, when everyone's nerves are probably a little um, shaken at the moment and you all are being able to do your job and I know you all have families as well so I truly appreciate the, the level of work that you all do. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Councilor. I do want to say I'm sorry one more thing I do want to say to make sure that you know people are heeding the warnings that are being put out there. You all are providing a lot of great information to the public and it, it appears the streets to me have not been as congested as they typically would be. So I do hope that everyone is taking this storm very seriously and staying inside and, and going by the recommendations of the weatherman as well as our emergency operations staff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilperson. Chair Lawson. Councilperson Glenn Spiritus. Just want to thank uh, you, Jonathan, and the EOC staff, Chief Kurt, especially for the great job that you're doing right now. Uh, I have seen staff all over Singer Island, and I appreciate, on behalf of the community, everything that they're doing. And you've done a very good job, and just wish everybody good luck through the storm. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson. Councilperson Shirley Lanier. Okay. Um, I see we have uh, one person um, that has their hand raised. And so we'll go ahead and unmute the line. And you can go ahead and pose your question to the emergency operations team. I think she is still muted. Ms. DiPolito, can you hear us? OK. 
okay. What we'll do is certainly, uh, Mr. Polito, if you have a question for us, if you just want to send an email to jevans at rivierbeach.org, and we'll address whatever your question is or give you a call back um, because we want to make sure you you get your uh, your questions answered. Um, so again, thank you for uh, listening in on the call and thank you to all the staffers that are been actively deployed uh, with the emergency operations team and all our other support staff that have been able to help us prepare for this particular uh, event. Obviously, the non-essential city services have been suspended and we look to resume normal city operations on Friday, but our city staff is still working and, and still accessible to be able to provide services at a moment's notice. So thank you everybody for being on the call and we will push out subsequent information uh, concerning Hurricane Milton and what we're seeing in our community as well as adjacent communities. And we hope everyone is safe, uh, but remember we're a phone call away. Uh, we'll be working 24 hours uh, this evening and so we'll uh, someone's here to answer the phones and, and address a concern that you may have. So it's not too late to pose a question to us. We want you to know that we're here to support. Thank you, everybody, and be safe.